Right. Hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for November 18th, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. Uh, my name is Tim, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. Um, you may wonder, what is CircuitPython? This is an implementation of Python that's designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Uh, CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to help support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from their website at adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server, which you can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel, as well as the CircuitPython voice channel. The meeting occurs uh, typically on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, uh, 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time, except when that coincides with a U.S. holiday, uh, in which case we will typically move the meeting to the Tuesday following the uh, holiday on Monday. And again, if you'd like to receive notifications about those, uh, any potential changes to the day or time, just has to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord, and we'll ping that role with updates uh, whenever we are going to change the day or time of the meeting. There is a shared notes, uh, notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can contribute to the notes document beforehand if you'd like. Uh, the final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use that document to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run about 30 to 60 minutes, depending on how many folks we have for the round robin uh, sections. After each meeting, we will post a link for the next week's meeting uh, notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel over on Discord. Check the pinned messages there throughout the week to always find the latest notes document pinned there. Uh, if you wish to participate but you can't attend, that's no problem. You can leave hug reports and status updates in that document throughout the week, and uh, we will read them off for you during the meeting. Uh, all right, so we've got our uh, usual five parts. I think um, most of us are pretty familiar with these, but the quick uh, abbreviated rundown, we'll do some community news here first, look at a couple items from the uh, Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. Then we'll get into the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinko, where we take a look at the stats from across the project. Uh, after that, we will get into our first round robin, Hug Reports, where we can uh, give folks some thanks for uh, different things that we saw them uh, do, doing throughout the week that we found helpful. Uh, the fourth part is our next uh, round robin. That one will be status updates. That's where you can have a chance to tell folks what you've been up to for the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to until the next meeting. And that leaves us with the final part uh, in the weeds at the end where we have an opportunity for some more long form discussions. Those can be topics that came out of status updates or they can be identified ahead of time uh, as being too long for status updates or just uh, you know involving more input from more people. It's just a wider discussion. Uh, that's what in the weeds is best for. Uh, so that covers how the meeting will go. And with that, I will take the first timestamp here and get us started on community news. Uh, and first one for that. So first item from the newsletter this week, the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 was spotted in the wild. The highly anticipated Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 has been spotted publicly at Electronica 20, uh, 2024, uh, attached to the Compute Module 5 I.O. board. Uh, there are links here to Macedon, Haxter I.O., and X. Uh, next up, we have... Uh, a talk from DEF CON, uh, Reverse Engineering MicroPython Frozen Modules. So Wesley McGrew at DEF CON 32 gave a talk on Reverse Engineering MicroPython Frozen Modules. There's a link here to uh, YouTube, which has the, the talk, and then there's a link to the, I think it's a DEF CON article, which is uh, essentially also just the uh, link to YouTube there. Uh, so this was pretty fascinating. I've watched a couple of the other um, DEF CON talks, and they uh, have got some interesting stuff in them, and I'm uh, partway through this one, and it's uh, also very interesting. It's nice to see uh, MicroPython pop up in a place uh, like that, with someone really diving into um, the internals of the MPY format and how stuff gets frozen into the core. That's uh, pretty cool. pretty cool talk so far. Um, next up, we have technical con comparison between the RP2350 and the RP2040 chips. Uh, this one was posted by SparkFun. SparkFun pro provides a technical comparison of the RP2350 and the RP2040 microcontrollers. So if you want to get the lowdown on the new chip and how it compares to the old one, 
Check out that post from SparkFun. Uh, next up, we have the Project of the Reek, which was a uh, trading Game Boy. This was a little Game Boy-like form factor device. This person uh, was using it to populate with stock, uh, stock market trading statistics and things like that. Um, and it's a super cool concept, both uh, cool hardware made out of the Raspberry Pi Pico, as well as uh, I really like the way that they did up the display and were able to show uh, so much relevant information to their project on the display. So super cool project. Check that out. There are links here to QuestDB and the Adafruit blog if you'd like to learn more about that uh, project. Uh, and rounding out the news this week, the new Learn Guides. Uh, this one caught my eye over on Learn this week, the NFC Raspberry Pi Media Player from Liz. A uh, cool guide where you can set up your Raspberry Pi to play videos uh, based off some little VHS uh, NFC tags. So you can uh, put the tag up next to it and it'll play whichever video is associated with that tag. So super cool project. Check out the Learn Guide if you would like to learn more about that and potentially even build your own. So uh, those items and many more came from the Python on Microcontrollers weekly newsletter, which is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter that is emailed every Monday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com. It highlights the latest in Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. Uh, if you'd like to contribute your own news or projects, uh, you can edit next week's uh, draft on GitHub. There is a link here in the notes doc if you'd like to go straight to that. You can uh, just submit a PR with your changes. Um, if uh, GitHub and version control is not your thing, that's fine as well. You can also submit items and projects uh, via email to cpnews at adafruit.com or on social media if you tag a post with hashtag CircuitPython on Mastodon Blue Sky or X, uh, that will get seen as well. Um, and with that, I will take another timestamp and we will transition to the state of CircuitPython, the libraries in Blinka. So this section is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. Uh, we'll talk about the project overall and then separately discuss the core, the libraries and Blinka. So first up, I'll give you the overall stats this week. Uh, across all of the CircuitPython repositories, we had 17 pull requests merged uh, by eight different authors. Uh, the names here that were newer or uh, less frequent or just didn't uh, weren't familiar to my eye um, this week, so these folks might be newer or less frequent contributors. Uh, those were uh, Python with a, a, a 7 instead of a T and then KTNYT. Uh, and then the rest of these names I do feel like we see pop up more frequently, but uh, we, of course, very much appreciate those folks as well, too. Um, we had five reviewers, again, mostly the usual folks, so thank you to our reviewers this week. And we had, it looks like, 35 issues closed by four people with 10 new issues opened up by nine people, so net down a bit on issues overall. Uh, I will pass it over uh, to Jeff, who has volunteered to tell us about the core this week. Hello. So in the core, which is the implementation of the CircuitPython language itself in C, we had five pull requests merged by six authors, uh, including Python and, with a seven. And the reason that we can have six authors in only five pull requests is that a single pull request can have multiple authors. Um, and we had three reviewers, so thank you to those folks. Pull request wise, we're standing at 24 open pull requests, which meets our goal of being of keeping all open pull requests on a single page. Many of those are draft and have been open for a couple of hundred days. So if you do have one of those uh, pull requests, please consider getting back to us. And if you aren't going to work on it right now, it's OK to close that and reopen it at any time in the future. Um, issues wise, we were up one issue because we had two issues closed and three issues opened leaving us with 752 open issues. We track Adafruit priorities by using the milestones feature of GitHub. And here are a couple of the, um, of the milestones that denote work that Adafruit is prioritizing. First up, we have issues that we'd like to solve before we make the next 9.2 stable release. And there are two issues in that category. Then we've got um, general things that we'd like to fix or improvements that we think we can do during the 9 XX series, and that includes 44 open issues. And then we've got 10 issues, excuse me, 13 issues that are marked with the 10.00 milestone, 
which means that it's uh, stuff that we would like to do, but it usually represents an incompatible change, and we try to confine those only to major releases. Uh, a lot of issues are defined as long-term, and that uh, encompasses all the issues that Adafruit is not prioritizing working on, but as a community member, we would welcome your work on any of those long-term issues. And uh, finally, we've got two issues not assigned a milestone. Um, Dan usually triages those and stays on top of them, so thank you, Dan. But there may be a couple to look at at this time, or at least uh, there were as of the time that these statistics were generated. And that's the state of the core. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Next up is the section covering the CircuitPython libraries. Uh, all of these libraries can be found on GitHub. Uh, the Adafruit ones can be found under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it is. Uh, we also have a community bundle, which has uh, libraries made by the community, which don't always follow the uh, exact same naming scheme, but you can, of course, see a list of all of those over in the community bundle as well. Um, across all of the libraries this week, uh, well, let me uh, first actually start with the numbers. We, we recently added the numbers to this report of library counts, so I've got to get in the habit of reading those first. We've got um, 347 Adafruit libraries. There are 159 in the community bundle, and the uh, new bit this week also in this report, it totals them up for us so we can see that there are a total of 506 CircuitPython libraries across the uh, Adafruit and community bundles, which is very cool to see. Um, this week uh, in the libraries, we had 12 pull requests merged uh, by two authors. Thanks again to KTNYT, uh, and I did some work in libraries as well this week. We had five reviewers, uh, thanks to Lady Ada, Jeff, uh, Tectric, and Dan, as well as myself, for doing some reviews this week. Very much appreciated. Uh, of the pull requests that were merged, uh, it was mostly on the newer side again. So the oldest one was only 25 days, uh, and the uh, newest handful were down at one day. Um, after that, uh, after that seven days, so, uh, you know, as of today or as of when these stats were run, we have, uh, 47 open pull requests remaining. Um, the oldest one of those is a draft that is at 823 days and the newest one is down at one day. Uh, over the past week, we had 33 issues closed. Uh, so I've been, uh, working through issues. And so we've got another decent chunk of those knocked, knocked off this week. Uh, we had four people who closed those issues, and then six new issues opened up by five people, so we were net down quite a bit. Uh, and that leaves us with 841 open issues across all these uh, libraries, and there are 97 of them that have the good first issue label. Uh, you can find all of those good first issues as well as the others listed over at circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is the website where you should head if you are interested in getting involved in the CircuitPython project, uh, particularly on the code side of things. On that page, again, circuitpython.org slash contributing, what you'll find is a list of open PRs across all these libraries, uh, just links that take you over to GitHub. Um, if you would like to get started and you haven't done anything before with CircuitPython, this list is generally where we point folks towards first, uh, is take a look through these open PRs, find something that is either interesting to you or that you've got the hardware for, you feel like you're uh, able to take a look at the changes and try them out on hardware if you do have it. You can leave comments on GitHub letting us know uh, that you looked it over for syntax or spelling or logic within the code. Uh, if you did have the hardware and you were able to run whatever that uh, PR was changing on the hardware, you can let us know that in the comment as well. Uh, if you do that a couple of times and you'd like to get leveled up to leave official reviews on GitHub, we can work with you to make that happen as well, if that's something you want to keep doing. Uh, but honestly, the uh, the comments are quite helpful as well from folks, even when they're not uh, you know, official reviews on GitHub. This is still very helpful to have folks taking a look at stuff and letting us know uh, what they found. So huge thanks to everyone who does that. Uh, if you would like to start getting your hands dirty on the actual coding side of things, rather than reviewing on that page, circuitpython.org slash contributing, you can click over to the list of issues uh, along the top of the page. There's some links there. You click over to issues, you'll again find uh, a big list of links that go over to GitHub, but these ones are open issues in each library rather than pull requests. So uh, these are things like uh, bug reports and uh, requests for new features or enhancements for the libraries. Uh, these do not have any code associated with them yet. Uh, they are waiting for someone to come along who's willing to actually uh, put fingers to keyboard and write out some code to implement whatever whatever that issue is talking about, be it a fix or a new feature or enhancement or what have you. 
Um, if you are new to the process, if you haven't used version control like Git or GitHub before, uh, we do have a guide for helping folks contribute to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub. Uh, we also have folks who are around throughout the week who are more than happy to help you help get you spun up. So if you are trying to contribute or you would like to contribute, but you feel like the version control uh, is a hurdle that you are unable to, to get over, uh, please come join us on Discord. Uh, say hi, let us know what you're up to, and uh, certainly there will be someone there who's willing to help you out. Uh, and that applies to anything, of course, not just version control. If you would like to get involved with CircuitPython, uh, but you feel there is uh, any part of the process um, that you're not that you're having trouble with or that you need some help with, please come say hi on Discord. We are always happy to help new folks get involved. Uh, we want everyone to be able to contribute in whatever way works for them. Um, in terms of the library updates, in the last seven days, the uh, ones listed here are the Clue library, the Button library, and Display.io layout. Um, those all have uh, little fixes, and uh, Layout has a new widget, the linear layout, uh, which is added there. Uh, so next up, I will tell you about uh, Blinka. Let me take a timestamp. Uh, Blinka is our compatibility layer for CircuitPython and single board computers like the Raspberry Pi. Um, in Blinka this week, uh, it's been relatively uh, slow going in the Blinka world. We do still have uh, zero pull requests this week. Uh, no authors, no reviewers. There are eight open pull requests. Looks like a couple even in the last uh, few days. So we'll take a look at those. Um, there are, let's see, no issues uh, closed this week, but there was one new issue, uh, one new issue opened up by one person. Uh, and there are a total of uh, 113 open issues across the Blinka libraries. Um, there were uh, 18,097 Pi Wheels downloads, and Blinka is currently supporting 146 boards. All right, and with that, I will take another timestamp and set up the uh, the hug reports section here for us so hug reports will come next this is a chance to highlight folks in the circuit python community and beyond for doing awesome things i'll start then we'll go down the list in the notes document uh, which is typically in alphabetical order uh, everyone can have a chance to participate if you're text only or missing the meeting then i'll read your notes once we get to them in the list so I will kick us off. Uh, Dan is up after me, but uh, my hug reports for the week. Uh, thank you to Tyeth for researching some Python inheritance specifics about how to call uh, a quote-unquote grandparent uh, superclass init function instead of the quote-unquote parent class, which is more uh, typical. I was working on something on a stream related to this, and I did not know that this was even possible. Uh, Tyeth went and uh, took a dive into the docs, figured out that it was, and shared the way to do it, which was uh, super helpful. Thank you to Tyeth. Um, hug report to maker Melissa. Uh, welcome back. It's nice to have you back uh, working on some bits of CircuitPython and Blinka stuff. And uh, thank you as well for adding many of the third-party board how-to links to circuitpython.org. And lastly for me, thanks to Gordy G, who pointed out the cause of a visual issue that I was having during the stream. I was working on something. It was drawing... Uh, in a bit of a funky way, and Gordy G um, told me what the problem was, which was super appreciated. Um, with that, I will hand it over uh, to Dan next. All right, thanks. OK, thanks to you, Tim, who uh, you're working on uh, the backlog of CircuitPython library pull requests and issues, and also CircuitPython.org. I should also mention that, that oh, there are many, many pull requests an issue closing that you've been doing recently, that's really helpful. Uh, I really appreciate it. And Melissa, uh, as other people have mentioned and will mention, it's great to have you back. And that's it. All right, thanks, Dan. Uh, next up is Jeff. Hi again. So I want to start off with a group hug, uh, but I also want to uh, express to Melissa that I'm happy to see her picking up some CircuitPython and Blinka work again. To you, Tim, thank you for fixing particularly that bitmap label bug that I ran into a while back, as well as a ton of other issues. And um, I just want to remark that this is five years since I made Adafruit my primary work, and I'm really grateful for all the time I've had in this wonderful community and learning how to do all sorts of things. So thank you very much for that. That's what I got. All right, that's awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, next up is Liz. I'll take a timestamp here and give you Liz's hug reports. Liz has a hug for Melissa that says, welcome back. 
uh, and a hug for Jeff that is, thanks for reviewing a Learn repo PR that involved looking at a recent refactor in fast LED that was causing the CI to break. Thanks to Liz for those hug reports. So next up, I will take another timestamp and tell you about the status updates section. Status updates is our time to tell folks what we've been up to individually. I'll start, then we'll go through the list, uh, again, alphabetically or as it appears in the notes doc. When I call on you, you could take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing uh, over the next week until the next meeting. Uh, this is also an opportunity for folks to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. So uh, feel free to do that if something comes to mind. Uh, if the discussion does become too long for status updates, we can always move it down to in the weeds for a more long form discussion. Uh, so I will take a timestamp and tell you about my status updates for the week. Uh, I have been, uh, as mentioned, kind of uh, working my way through lots of issues in various different libraries, and this week it was mostly centered on display and display.io uh, libraries. So uh, with that in mind, the things that I've been working on, I refactored and cleaned up the text box widget, which I mentioned last week, and submitted the PR for that, and that's now been merged. So text box is now in display text. It'll appear uh, in the bundle tomorrow, of course. Um, and uh, as a the quick version is this basically is a label that has a constrained width and height so you can set the size of it and then it will uh, wrap your text automatically to fit inside of that size and it will also allow you to align to the center or to the right which are um, not currently possible with the other labels um, in the display shapes library uh, i added a filled polygon class that lets you make a polygon which has a fill color and an outline color so it behaves like the rest of the shapes in the library uh, the original Polygon class does outline only, so this new one um, kind of behaves more like circle and rectangle and all the rest of them. Um, but while I was at it, I did also uh, enhance the existing Polygon a bit by making it possible to set the stroke size. So um, that was another difference in Polygon. Uh, it did not support fill, but it also did not support different sizes for the stroke of the outline. Uh, but I was able to get that working for both the original Polygon and the new uh, filled one, which I was pretty excited about. Um, a little bit more uh, mundane is uh, a refactor inside of Blinka Display oh, to the way that I2C send function works uh, when you have an I2C display. Um, this was basically the crux of a, uh, a sleep and wake issue on certain displays where when you would call sleep or wake, it wouldn't work. Um, on Blinka versus the core, there was a bit of a difference causing it to work on one and not the other. So this was a change that was suggested in one of the issues uh, to Blinka, which makes it so the sleep and wake can work in both places without the library having to have special code, which is nice. Um, in the SH1107 driver, uh, I fixed an issue that caused the rotation to be 90 degrees off um, if you were to update it after initializing. So you could initialize it the first time and you would get uh, you know, kind of the expected behavior, but then if you change the rotation afterwards, you would be kind of 90 degrees off from what it was when you initialized it. So that is um, now fixed in a PR. In uh, display text, um, I fixed a, a, an issue where if you were to pass incorrect arguments, it wouldn't give you an error or warning at all. It would just kind of happily go along and do its thing, but obviously not do what you intended since you gave it um, you know, a typoed argument or just an incorrect argument or something. So that's now a little bit more uh, kind to the developer. It will tell you when you have passed something incorrect. Uh, and as mentioned before, also a quick fix for bitmap label to certain fonts that have ascenders and descenders. We're chopping off the top and bottom of the text. Um, so that is now fixed in bitmap label. You can use your fancy fonts and actually see uh, the entire thing, which is cool. And lastly, for me, I added a linear layout to the display IO layout library. This is basically a uh, layout that will line up your other views into a vertical or horizontal list. So if you want to put uh, multiple text labels uh, uh, you know, stacked up one on top of the other, this will help you with that or if you want to align some stuff in a horizontal line uh, one after the other, this will help you with that as well. Uh, so next up, I will pass it over to Dan uh, for his status updates. All right, so um, more minor things, uh, there was a problem with I2C target, which is the uh, peripheral side of I2C, and it worked fine after a hard reset, but not after a soft reset. That was a storage cleanup problem, and that's fixed. And mostly I'm working on circuit matter um, while Scott is away, and I'm trying to get it to run on CircuitPython. It 
the Python version, the, the current code uses um, the ECDSA library, Lipid Curve Photography Library, and I got that to load after making various hacks to it, but it, it gets a stack overflow quickly. I looked at some other uh, ECDSA libraries that didn't really uh, have the features that we needed. So I'm now looking to see whether we could just not use that library at all and use some of the elliptic curve functionality that's in the LWIP library um, and just provide a Python interface to that C code, which would make things smaller and faster also. So I'm better, in order to do that, I have to understand what Matter is doing with cryptography. And I'm starting to read the spec, which is um, the first, the main one I'm reading is 1,100 pages long. Fortunately, there's a lot of boilerplate in there. But I have to still understand a large chunk of it. OK. All right. Thank you, Dan. Uh, next up, I will send it over to Jeff. Hi again. So um, I've been doing a few small things in the CircuitPython world, such as code reviews, but my main work has still been in Arduino with floppy emulation. And I'm still working on getting my Xerox 820 CPM computer to um, treat the flopsy as a floppy disk. And I'm running into an error, and I haven't tracked down the cause of that error yet. So continuing with that, but uh, my work right now is low-level stuff over in the Arduino world. I'd rather be in the CircuitPython world, but uh, it's not really the right environment for this particular task. All right. Thank you, Jeff. And that is it for status updates. So next up would be the in the weeds section, which as a reminder is that opportunity for more long form discussions, either uh, topics that came out of status updates or topics that were identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. Uh, we do not have any topics down there currently, so I will uh, tell you about it, but then we will move right along to wrapping up for the week. Uh, so let me scroll down a bit. Uh, yes, this uh, yeah, this has been CircuitPython Weekly Meeting again for November 18th, 2024. Thanks to everyone who participated. Uh, as a reminder, if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will get released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be made available on major podcast services. It will also get featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which you can visit adafruitdaily.com in order to subscribe to that if you'd like. Uh, the next meeting is at the usual time on Monday next week, uh, the 25th of November at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, the meeting is, uh, as always, held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. Uh, if you would like to be notified about any potential changes to the day or time of the meeting, again, ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. We send out pings when the meeting is going to get moved there. Uh, and that is it for this week. Thank you to everyone. We hope to see you all next week.